What's the ratio of good to bad relationships for expats and their Filipino partners? You know, how many good marriages, how many bad? To be, to be honest with you, nobody will actually know. Um, statistically wise, there are no statistics. But online, you will find people that have had negative relationships grumble every day. Because um, Let's put this as mobile phones. I remember the uh, there was a study on the mobile phones uh, years and years ago where if you have a negative customer, uh, this, this is something a lot of companies don't understand anymore. It's called customer service. Um, we are the customer being the person who purchased, not you are the customer because you're providing the service. Um, that's why people leave your company as soon as they can. But anyway, so they were like, basically, you have one bad customer, they will tell 25 people. So if you imagine somebody's had a bad relationship, that was based on the 19, early 90s, 92, 93, the, you know, the big mobile phones. So bear in mind, people weren't using the internet then. Uh, they were using bulletin board systems, because they used to run one, um, but it wasn't in that type of communication. So it used to be 25 fold. So you'd, they would tell 25 people, your phones were naff. So they would turn around and say, 25 relationships. They would tell 25 people, Filipino relationships are bad, Filipinos are bad, etc., etc. How many people told you they were good? Very rarely. Or you, what you normally have is, Jim has the same mobile phone that you're looking at, you go, Jim, um, I'm looking at buying this mobile phone, the, the same one you've got. This one? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're really good. Okay, thanks for that. That's the good ratio. So, relationship-wise, how many people are happy married? Who knows? Because nobody tells you. Because all you'll see is the, the odd person that's actually in a relationship, and they will actually say, how, how, you know, how are you finding it, you know, being married to somebody who's from overseas? And they'll say, oh, we had problems with immigration and stuff. They don't go, oh, she's fantastic, she's like this. Because like. generally you don't. It's not a normal um, conversation. <laughs> but the negative people will. The negative people will go, she stole all my money. She took me for the house. As soon as she got to America or the UK, she was after the house. She wanted half my salary and all this sort of stuff. There's a thin line here. The thin line being that you've got one side of the argument. Because if you went down the other side, that side, you would actually probably hear the guys, a womanizer, guys are drunk, he's mental, uh, he treated his wife as a slave, all these sort of things. Because the ratio is so distorted. Because not only have you got no people supporting the good marriages, You've got nobody supporting um, the other side of the argument on the failed marriage in the first place. This is why you hear a lot of people go, oh, well, when she got to my country, she went like this, like this. Oh, the same stuff you've read online. That's convenient, isn't it? So what? what when, when did this start? Um, because a lot of this stuff is preventable, even if it is true. Because this is why I say communication is important. Because if you have good communication, you understand your partner. Well, these guys don't. They have no idea. They couldn't care less. I mean, the funny thing is, I've spoken to a lot of Filipino women that are in online relationships and in relationships. A few people have stopped at my apartments and stuff. So I know a lot about some of the good people and a lot of the, about the bad people. Um... Also knowing several landlords in Cebu, I know all the horror stories that, stories that landlords have to deal with. Because we see the bits that nobody wants to talk about. The bipolar conditions, the heavy medication, the heavy drinking, the violent drunks, etc. etc. So this is what I'm saying. When people are running Filipino women down, I would say look at the guys first. Because there's probably more problems in the guys than there is in the girls. Because anybody that is um, switched on, 
shouldn't really have any problems in the Philippines because you can see most things coming. What I, when I say switched on, the, see that he, here's the thing. I said switched on, didn't say trusting because the trusting is a different thing. A lot, a lot of people get in trouble because they trust people. Generally, I keep trust to myself. Um, to get my trust, you have to run it over a period of time. It's a bit like the guy that stole all the egg boxes, 2,000 pesos worth of, well, he stole the 2,000 pesos for egg boxes. We, we had 3,200 in his salary that was due on the Friday. This is the bizarre thing. So even with that, he thought he's got away with 2,000 pesos. He's actually left me with 3,200 because I have no idea. I've never seen the guy again. So you've got to be aware that a lot of the stuff isn't very uh, straightforward. And I get irritated by these people that rant online about oh, Philippines, like they don't trust the women, don't. Yeah, they've been whining about it for the last four or five years because their wife left them. But did anybody ask them why their wife left them? Did anyone speak to the wife? What What was the founding for all this going wrong? What started it all? Because it's very easy to say, oh, she only wanted money, she only wanted a passport, she only wanted a visa, etc. But when you delve into it a bit deeper, it often isn't the case. Now, don't get me wrong, those are legitimate things as well. There are a lot of women just after passports. There are a lot of women just after cash, etc. But that's where I said, this air con is driving me nuts today. Um, you need to have the communication. Because communication is not just about talking. It's about understanding. It's about seeing the deeper level. Um, my wife will tell you, I'll bring up stuff two years later and go, oh, didn't we do this? Uh, you know, it can be a bit off-putting, I'll be honest with you. The reason I do it is business-wise, because somebody will tell me something, and I'll remember it. And then later on, they'll come up with an excuse for something not working, saying, oh, we're still waiting on parts. And they say, yeah, but you told me six months ago, it's just been fully overhauled and it's all new parts. And then that would be the long pause, because he's like, how did you remember that? But then that's, that's me. Um... But, going off on a tangent as usual, the, the point being is, it's not all straightforward, bad, 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 good, good, good. You need to look at the fact there's a lot of happily married people out there. You need to do the groundwork, the homework, the understanding, the communication. And one of the things I will say, and I've done it on a video before, do not fall for the, but she told me she loved me. That takes time to develop doesn't mean you have to fall head over heels like a teenager because you know what when you were a teenager when the relationships a bit more um, short-lived <laughs> should we put it that way that that's probably the best way of putting it actually because when you were falling over heels the relationship lasted two weeks and then you were off with somebody else or if she was that's teenage romance for you so be aware that it's all about what you put in to what you get out and also where you, you not where you meet these women but often what where they come from in society does she work how long has she been working there does she have issues with a family does she is there a lot of stuff in the background that you you're not aware of because it's normally family issues that create the biggest problems for anybody um, but once you actually have a good founding relationship, you should be able to work everything else out. That's why you drive the communication, because you, you turn around and go, the easiest way of doing it is, I'm Bill Payer. Bill Payer needs to hear everything, because Bill Payer makes the decisions. If you're getting hassled by your relatives, they need to speak to Bill Payer, because I make the money, you don't, you know. It could be as simple as that. And it's not being um, arrogant or whatever. What you're actually doing is creating a secure buffer for your partner. And you just said, my, my boyfriend, my husband says not to speak to me. He will not do anything unless anybody speaks to him directly. Because he pays the bills, so you need to speak to him, not me. I can't do anything about this. And that way, it will stop a lot of it like that. 
brick wall because they don't want to communicate with a foreigner because they know they're lying uh, a lot of the time. As such, they want to prevent that happening because they will push that these are Filipino problems and not your problem. But you should be pushing, it's my money, so it's my problem. Um, this is my wife, my partner. She's part of my family now. So if there's a problem for my wife, there's a problem for me. And as I'm the main breadwinner, every everything needs to be discussed with me. Otherwise, there will be no money released, regardless if it's a good or bad reason. It's creating that buffer, secure buffer, because your partner will be overruled by aunts, will be overruled by uncles, parents, etc. But when you turn around and say, I'm not releasing nothing unless they speak to me, they will get all tampo, you know, they'll pouting, they're, you know, they're all upset, they're, they're not getting their own way. But at the same time, you just go, well, fine, don't talk to me. Because at the end of the day, you control the purse strings. You took that and protecting your partner by doing it. Now, a little secret in here. For gentle, general stuff anyway, your partner should have access to the money anyway. Um, we don't have these problems anyway. I'm just saying that I know um, if there was more c control over the money in the first place, then a lot of the problems that people face wouldn't even happen. Because... If you've got control over the finances, it stops all the from the families because they're all after the money. You know, when I say all, the ones that are doing this and trying to manipulate your partner are after the money. It's not they're doing it out of love to your partner; they're doing it for the cash. So make them aware of it. I mean, uh, I've talked about the the nanny we had before. Um, when we sat down and spoke to her about the the fact that her parents were manipulating her to steal and and um, all these other things going on she sort of become enlightened because up until that point she'd been very blinkered because her parents made her work um, told her that she had to do this had to do that and that's what she focused on because that's what she knew that's why I say you know education is important because education is the milestone that develops everything else, gives you a broader perspective. Without it, you're only listening to what you're told. And these people were very, very manipulative to the nanny. Um, before she came to us, she was working somewhere else. And she was having a falling out with the, the mother there of the person who owned the, the store and that she was working at. So she came up to us. But the thing was, later on when we spoke to the person about the, you know, the problems of the thievery, um, she said, well, her mother used to come to the, the door, the, the nanny's mother, on payday and take all her salary. So she didn't even have money for soap or, you know, basic cleaning stuff. Because her mother had basically stolen all her wages, left her there for a month and just took all her money. That's how bad some of these people can be. So this is why communication is a key, um, sitting down and talking about it. Because what we did is we worked out how we could make it work for the nanny. Uh, first thing is we said, look, we could sack you, but our main concern is you'll probably end up in jail sooner or later because of the stuff you're doing. But if you stay, we'll work something out. First thing is, we help to regain our trust, but um, opened a bank account, told her how to not tell your parents how much you actually really earn, so that even if you are getting into these things, you can turn around and still be banking money every month for yourself, because you should be looking for your future, not your parents, because your parents got seven kids and seem to spend most of their time on their back. Um, so don't don't get roped into it you know you, you deserve better than this you know you, your parents are not helping you they're using you in a slave-like manner um, so we changed the perspective from she thought that was normal for her parents to do this stuff to her to the fact that it's, it's not right you know her parents have never worked they just got bred kids lived off of their sister 
uh, uh, the mother's sister, and then moved on to using the kids as slave labor so they could sit on their backsides. Um, I'll leave it at that, but communication changed that girl's life. Although she did run off with her girlfriend later on, um, I am hoping that what she did learn actually helped her set her up for a long term life. But also, her girlfriend, um, although a little strange, she she works so I could see them both working and if they stay together they might actually be okay um, but hey ho welcome to the Philippines <laughs>